and the kids are absolutely incredible. I just really enjoyed watching their camaraderie. Did you have much time to prepare before um, sort of start shooting, or did that chemistry just come when you start shooting? No, we spent no, no. <laughs> chance to be a fine thing. No, we spent many months, uh, many months in the different communities, different favelas. Uh, working with different young people and these boys actually over many many months before we even cast them um, and then many months after that getting them ready and it wasn't really getting them ready is a silly thing to say it's it's giving them ownership of the story so it was really talking to them explaining what the story might be and letting them tell it back to us in a way that made sense for them um, and so that took a long long period of time but I think that the fruits of it are that the kids you know the film is infused with their energy um, but also their sense of humour in Brazil. It plays as a straightforward comedy because um, they're very, very funny. Um, but their friendship and, and things that are really important to them, like justice, um, anger at the police, um, but a sense of determination, tenacity and, uh, and courage, I think. So this was much more listening to the kids and how they would make it, allow this story to make sense for them. Um, and we gave them huge freedom to, you know, huge amount of freedom to... Uh, change the story if they thought it needed to be changed. Um, but uh, I just got very lucky with these kids because I think they're, they're astonishing. And, and the heart of the film is the, this incredible journey of friendship and, and hope that they get. Yes. And the hard thing about the film, from an editorial point of view, is that the kids often didn't repeat the same thing. You know, they would do a scene and then you try to, you know, sometimes you have to move the camera and they would not necessarily ever do the same thing again. You know, they'd just do something else, which was kept, kept them so bright and alive and funny and, and authentic. In a sense, you have to give them, well, first of all, you have to assume everything's going to take much longer. Um, you have to work, find a way that it's very much about never telling them what you want, but always trying to get them to tell you what they can do. And it's, so it's a, the process is much, a, much more about them revealing themselves to you and you being open to that and actually open to trying to work with them and certainly never saying the, the words, you know, no, that's not right or please don't do that or can you do this instead, but actually go with them as much as you possibly can and change everything according to what they're giving you. So I was going to ask about unlocking their potential and kind of, you know, sustaining their confidence. With, you know. Well, sustaining confidence is, uh, is about support and actually that's about creating a support mechanism that isn't just a, you know, actually... It's, I think it's quite important to create a, a, a community around them while they're making the film, and indeed afterwards to a certain extent, to allow them to maintain, a, well actually more than anything else, it's just tenacity. Because making a film is in, you know, profoundly boring and profoundly tedious and very long hours, so why on earth would they stay with the process? And certainly they have no knowledge about what they're making. They've got no investment in the finished product necessarily. So their only investment and their only commitment is to you. The primary difference between a non-professional and a professional is the idea of repeated action. It's just repeated action. Now there's many systems in place in the theatre and in film, but mostly in the theatre. Um, people have spent many years and many centuries debating how you do repeated action from Stavoslansky onwards. So what is the idea of a repeated action? In other words, how do you do it twice? How do you do it three times? How do you, you know, non-professionals won't understand the idea of turning the camera around. Like, why would they think, why would they imagine turning the camera around? Um, why would they think they had to do it again? So, the best way of approaching that is to ask them not to do it again, but actually to keep reinventing it and keep reinventing it. It can cause you issues in the edit room, but again, asking for repeated action, which is a very technical thing to ask someone to do. Um, is usually not the way to pursue it, I found.